by my salty pecans and welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi my name is Pamela and on today's video I am going to be actually sharing with you all how I got rid of thrips in my collection and also just sharing with you all a few photos and videos of the plants that really exhibited extreme signs of thrips damage how I noticed it on my plants and how you yourself like I said can get rid of it if you are currently dealing with it because I have noticed that quite a number of people on social media in regards to plants have posted that they are dealing with thrips and I thought it's perfect to share my experience and just my advice also, in my previous video, I got a couple of requests for me to share my journey and some advice. So, that's what we're doing today. Before we get started into the video, make sure you subscribe. Don't be out here taking my tips, my secrets, my care, <laughs> you know, info. And not share some love. Share some love, subscribe, become a salty pecan. We're really amazing my houseplant community you guys are so awesome so yes let us watch the intro and then get right into this video <laughs> Welcome back everybody. Let's talk about thrips and just pests in your houseplant collection. Here is basically a bit of backstory on who I am, how long I've been growing plants, and my experience with plant pests. I, hi, I am Pamela like I mentioned in the intro and I run houseplant and I have been collecting house plants for over a decade now. I've been growing house plants since I was in the single digits in Haiti and then immigrating to America. Then in my teens, I developed the curiosity to continue growing my own personal plants after watching my mom grow bamboo, grow aloe, and grow certain sort of native but easy to keep plants so that was just my introduction to plants from my youth and then watching my mother grow house plants in our home so she gifted me my very first plant which was a Diefenbachia which you know just love stoic stoic is just beautiful and since then I've continued to collect plants in my home as mentioned, I started with one plant and over time I got, you know, three plants and then my collection had five plants and I had maybe ten plants in my home. At that time, it was easy to manage, easy to observe and know that, okay, I purchased a money tree, for example, from the dollar store for a dollar and the plant did not look very well. So I knew I was purchasing something and it was not well, I had to care for it. So I was attentive and observant in any issues for that particular plant. Recently, in the past maybe five years or so, I discovered the online plant community and since then, purchasing different sort of plants became more atta attainable for me. With that being said, the agricultural inspections are not the same when I'm purchasing a plant from someone's personal collection versus purchasing it from a store where it is supposed to, right, supposed to be free of pests, insects, and any sort of vermins that can harm our environment. So, as mentioned, once I discovered the online plant community, I no longer was really going in stores and purchasing the common house plants because I already had them in my home. I was able to get Hoyas that my local garden center doesn't have or my local Home Depot doesn't have. So the first plant pest that really came into my home that was very noticeable was mealybugs. 
I went through a whole situation with mealybugs which infested my whole windows and at that time I was not educated enough about plant pests to really uh, watch and look for little white fluffy cotton under an already unhealthy looking plant when I never knew about it until it became an issue for me. So that is my mealybug story, incomplete, very short. Now in regards to thrips, I was not paying attention to this vermin, this pest, this insect when it came into my home. I believe it came into my home around late summer, early fall, and I believe it also came into my home when I went to, I believe, a plant swap because it had to be from there. Because prior to me going to the plant swap sometime in September, I had not purchased a new plant since, I would say, May. Right? So from May to September, there were no new plants in my home. All of my plants were healthy, bountiful, just mm, delicious, creme de la creme. Then all of a sudden, around October, late September, I started noticing just weirdness in the visual right the visual of my foliage so i would look at my foliage and i'm like oh this doesn't look normal and then i noticed another leaf was not looking normal and when i looked further into it i'm like oh maybe i have this sort of insect which is a leaf miner no upon again further inspection I did discover that I had thrips so I noticed because you're supposed to look at your foliage it's always recommended that you inspect your foliage you wipe them down for this specific reason but around that time there was moving going in my home so the last thing really on my mind when I'm moving house is looking at the foliage of my plants when I'm gonna assume it's just soil. Pretty much I noticed and observed on multiple different plants that the soil was actually moving. The soil was just not like specks from dirt flying from one plant to another. It was literal pests that were just like hopping, walking, crawling, flying, and it was thrips. So I was definitely nervous because thrips is one of the harder plant pests to get rid of. But if you're able to contain it, if you're able to manage the pest, and if you're able to treat it in a way where it's repeated and you're able to combat and kill off all the stages of the pest, then you can get rid of thrips. So the issue that I find in regards to all plant pest management is that many people, they just worry about what you can see, the adults. But just like humans, right, there's multiple stages of life. There's fetus, there's infants, there's toddlers, there's teens, there's adults. And the same applies to insects in order to get rid of a pest 100 percent you have to not only kill off the adults that you see crawling flying around you also have to kill off the teenagers that are crawling that also are very light green that you might not know are insects you think it's just like some translucent thing on your foliage you have to get rid of those you also have to get rid of the eggs right that have a barrier a layer over it to protect it from maybe anything you're spraying right so you have to get rid of all of that you have to get rid of the adults that can run away from you you have to get rid of the maybe stationary or maybe still not able to fly off teens and then you have to be able to get rid of the eggs that have not yet hatched right so a lot of plant pesticides, plant insecticides, they 
only really work for adults and they don't work for eggs the larva i'm sharing with you all what i did in my collection not only to get rid of the mealybugs not only to get rid of like easy pests like fly gnats but to get rid of a harder pest like thrips again as mentioned what i did and i'm just gonna show you all what i do and just very easy it's really 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 simple there's so many products that people promote there are so many little ways to just contain the pest but not get rid of it you have to not only contain the the pest from spreading to other plants but you also have to get rid of it i'm going to add a clip after i show you all the products of me using this and this was recorded during the whole situation i did not share the thrips ordeal on youtube but i did post it on tiktok because i'm like oh why not make this a tiktok content and i recorded it on my phone at that time too so i'm gonna add that video into here after i share with you all the products okay so the first and second product and there's only three products that i use for this okay the first, and this is not sponsored, but please do sponsor me if you all see this. But I'm also going to tag this product down below. And it is these two. So this is what worked for me. And these two products I have also recommended to family members for them to use when they were also dealing with thrips. Yes, again, this thing... I don't know where this infestation came from, but from coast to coast, people are dealing with this situation right now. So the first product is the BioAdvance 3-in-1 Insect Disease and Mite Control for uses on trees, shrub, roses, and flowers. Okay, this is the first one, and I also mix it with the Harris Neem Oil. These two products in conjunction with water are the miracle products that i use to get rid of thrips in my entire house plant collection you just follow the measurement directions in here and also the measurement directions on here okay you so it, it'll tell you you know for like a gallon for a quart you do the dilution or you break down the dilution into a smaller portion so let's say you're dealing with let's say in your collection you have 10 plants and you and you only have 10 plants why make a gallons worth of dilution for 10 plants right if you don't need 10 plants worth of solution so if you need only a quart's worth do that do what you gotta do you don't have to like over make what you don't need so that's why in a previous video my products for basically beginner plant parents that you need I recommend like measuring utensils so you have them when you need to measure out products and you don't have to worry about overusing so the thing with these chemical products is you want to make sure you're not over measuring because you don't want to burn your plants so that's why it's like a large container small measurements for larger dilution of water okay I combine these two products and that's all I have to do now that you know the two products well three products that I use for it here is basically what I do to now fight the plant pest the first first thing comes while you're still in your plant room you're still in the space where you have your plants try to manually kill off any insects that you can like with your napkin with like your bare hands get rid of whatever adults you physically can then i transfer my plants into my bathroom into my shower there i will use my shower head and just rinse off the top of the foliage the bottom of the foliage in the but you know in the internode of the foliage the little crease of the foliage rinse all of that with water get rid of whatever is on sitting physically right 
so then I saturate the soil all of that I then will go with my already diluted mix I will saturate the soil why because a lot of pests a lot of insects whatever they will lay their eggs not only on the foliage they will lay their eggs in the soil you know in the first few inches of soil so make sure you're putting the dilution in your soil and then I don't want to like take a whole big gallon of water and blah, 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 pour it on my leaves no so I will take my gallon of water and I will take one of these basically pump sprays grab my pump spray and then boom I will put my product in here I will boom 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 pump my pump spray and then I will spray my foliage I will get in between again the crevices spray the bottom of the foliage right turn it over spray the bottom of the foliage spray the top of the foliage spray the stalk right because the, the the insect they can lay their eggs any and everywhere you want to make sure you're getting every single 120 percent of the foliage you are going to saturate your foliage with product you're going to saturate your soil with product and the reason that i use these two products is one this is the chemical right it's going to get not only the adults right it's also going to get the eggs it's going to get the larva it's going to be a solution that the plant is absorbing itself to poison any insects that are trying to feed off of it right but sometimes you have a hulk you have a superhero a super i said superhero a super villain insect right that maybe this Mm, didn't really get to it so the neem oil is again just like a preventative right neem oil will like it's basically like a poison it deters a bunch of insects and pests from laying on top of your soil on top of your foliage and it will also add some sheen so again make sure you're diluting this properly because neem oil is known to burn your foliage if you do not dilute it properly so with a mixture of this, you just need a little bit of neem oil and the little bit of measured out product. And that's that. So you're going to do one basically clear out, clean out of your plants. You're going to bring them back to their home. The following watering session, you're going to repeat the same thing. So you can make the mix ahead of time or you can make make it when you need it so I recommend you just make it when you need it so you just don't really have stuff just sitting around it's not a bunch of work if you learn to divide measurements you know until what you need okay so that's all you do it's really really simple and that's how I got rid of thrips in my collection this two are my miracle mix I, I'm obsessed with it and this is what this plant looks like. I'm currently battling some thrips on this plant. I'm not sure how thrips got into my home, but if you look a bit closer, this little black figure right here is actually a thrip. And as you can see it's mobile so just to prevent this spreading any further in my collection I am just going to behead every single last leaf on this plant because I know this plant will grow what I'm doing to help combat this on top of getting rid of the foliage is I have a mix of systemic pesticide plus neem oil in water and the reason that I'm choosing to behead the plant is the foliage is already damaged. There's no point in keeping all these crispy, dry, thrip-filled plants. Move all of these new unfurled ones because when you really check and you unfurl the plant, I notice there are just more juvenile crawlers and not so many adults. I also think there might just be some eggs in here. 
and just some more adult thrips. So even these that you might think, oh no, they are not damaged, I'm just unfurling them. Now I'm going to water it with my pesticide treatment. And on top of me getting the treatment inside of the soil, I'm going to spray this entire foliage. So this is now just been treated. I'm going to let it sit inside of my sink and dry. I'm also going to now go back to the area this plant was in and treat every single plant that was in this area because the thing with pests is that they're mobile. They travel from plant to plant. You don't know, they could travel by wind. They can travel maybe by you bumping into it and then going near another plant and it jumps off of you. So it's always recommended for you to treat every plant in a room in an area where there are also pests that you're trying to get rid of. But other than that, I'm going to just put the plant back after I treat everyone and repeat this treatment maybe two more times and I'll be good to go. But always remember, treat your pests everywhere on every plant treat in the soil you treat the soil because there can be eggs that are laid inside of it there can be pests that are hiding under you know the subsurface of the soil you never know it's always good get the roots get the system and actually get the visible foliage because of course that is what made you notice that there was issues with your plants make sure to follow me at houseplant h-a-u-z for more plant care tips and advice on that note let's get growing bye the next thing that I do for certain plants is sometimes maybe the spray mixture is not enough and a lot of plants I know are really easy to propagate so for some maybe just spraying the foliage down is not enough. I beheaded. it. So for Syngoniums I know this is a very hardy very strong plant and they're very susceptible very weak and I did not like how the foliage of this plant looked with the thrips damage so I decided to behead the whole entire plant and basically just like break off any piece of foliage that looked ugly so for example like this I could get rid of this this is really ugly and this one doesn't have any thrips damage but it looks just ugly in general so I'm just gonna break this one off so that's what I did and I know again Syngoniums, they're a plant that's really, it grows really fast if you give it what it wants. It just wants, give it some water, give it some sunlight, it's happy, it doesn't ask for too much, really easy going plant. Syngoniums don't really like to be too dry, but they can withstand a drought, but don't OD, that's all I have to say. And I beheaded a couple of plants, for example, my Adansonai, I had to behead it because it just was really ugly. So salty peeps, these are all of the advice and tips I can talk to you about in regards to getting rid of thrips in your houseplant collection. I know it's really tough and really stressful having to deal with plants that have pests, but ultimately it's reality <laughs> it's reality you can't get rid of pests even we as humans we deal with like house house rodents right house vermins house whatever oh, thank you she's just kneading on me wow thank you i didn't know i needed to be needed thank you <laughs> but it's so yes, thank you so much my Salty Pecans for watching this video. Like I mentioned, this is really easy. You do your dilution mix. I will have these products listed down below. So please, if you do want to purchase these and you're dealing with thrips, then check the description box of this video and I will have all of the products that I mentioned down below. Really easy. You can use this indoors and outdoors. Do your thing. Follow directions and be safe, be cool. So with that being said, thank you so much my Salty Pecans for watching this video. If you liked it, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and sharing. Subscribe if you aren't already. Join this little kooky family because we're pretty awesome here. Become a Salty Pecan. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. And I will see you on the next one. Let's get going. Bye. Oh, it's, it's my mama's place. Oh, my mama's hiding.
You want to eat meat? Eat meat? Eat meat? Yeah. Okay. All right. We're gonna go eat meat. <laughs> it's dinner time. <laughs> Let's get growing.